It was time for a haircut. Lenny didn't even have to look in the mirror. Even though he was going bald, he knew that he needed to cut his hair every two weeks. He had a tongue of hair on the top of his head. His hair was thinning at the crown. He still had plenty of hair on the sides and back. It was what they call salt and pepper, a mixture of gray hair and dark brown hair. It was only a few years, he figured until the salt and pepper became just salt. He never let his hair grow for more than two weeks. The longer it got, the worse it looked, he thought. He spread a newspaper over the bathroom sink so that no hair went down the drain. He plugged in the clippers and started cutting his hair. He started at the back of his head, went to the sides, and finished on the top. Every minute or so, he had to clean the hair out of the blades with an old toothbrush. Finished, he picked up a hand mirror to check out the back of his head. Everything looked okay. He carried the newspaper back out to the kitchen and shook the hair clippings into the trash can. Then he took a shower. A 79-year-old man was slightly injured on Saturday while waiting in his brand-new convertible in a drive through lane at Burger Prince Restaurant. Herman Sherman of Northville suffered a mild burn about 9 p.m. when a young female employee accidentally spilled a cup of coffee in into his lap. Sherman said the coffee was hot but not scalding. He refused medical aid, saying the only problem was the stain on his slacks, but it would wash out. He was given a fresh refill. Before Sherman drove off, the restaurant manager, John Johnson, gave him two free gift certificates one for an extra-large coffee and one for the restaurant's newest sandwich, the McCrap. The employee, who was a new hire, was let go later that evening. She was quite upset. She said she would probably sue Burger Prince for letting her go. She said it was the man's fault for ordering something that she might be able to spill. The simulation shows what you might see if you are orbiting a black hole. The light and position of background stars around the hole are distorted by its gravity and they seem to spin around. On the right, the constellation Orion appears to approach the event horizon the boundary from which nothing can escape. Orion stars look like they become separated and get spun around. Once the hole has passed by Orion reappears on the left and looks normal again. Users can also experiment with different scenarios. This is what you might see if you were traveling towards a black hole with rocket engines slowing your descent. Another simulation mimics free fall into a hole. In the middle, the light of the entire universe appears to be concentrated in a bright ring. Let's say if I'm asking which source you often use to get information. Newspaper? Radio? TV? And the survey shows 62% of the people chose the internet. You might be thinking I am going to say, how important the internet is, or how quickly it has changed the world for a few years. But what if I tell you this survey is conducted on the website globalandmail.com? Our answer will be different because the people who did this survey on a website must be frequent users of the internet. This sample is a biased sample. So we have to pay attention to how a survey is conducted.
the Western countries women, especially those under 30 years old, are becoming more and more reluctant to give birth to babies. However, the male status in society remains strong in recent years. The birth rates increased during the 20th century but it remains to decrease in the last two decades, reaching its historical low. In the year 2000, the birth rate remained at around 1%. There are even some negative birth rates in other countries. The birth rate dropped to its lowest point that has never been seen in history. It also has an impact on the male in society especially the young man, and it might have some connection with the unemployment rate as well. The infinite monkey theorem states that a monkey hitting keys at random on a typewriter keyboard for an infinite amount of time will almost surely type a given text, such as the complete works of William Shakespeare. In this context, almost surely is a mathematical term with a precise meaning, and the monkey isn't an actual monkey, but a metaphor for an abstract device that produces a random sequence of letters ad infinitum. The theorem illustrates the perils of reasoning about infinity by imagining a vast but finite number and vice versa. The probability of a monkey exactly typing a complete work such as Shakespeare's Hamlet is so tiny that the chance of it occurring during a period of time of the order of the age of the universe is minuscule, but not zero. But technologies can help monkeys to write. If the monkeys are given a pen and some papers to spell the word monkey, they can only scratch on the paper. By contrast, if they are given a typewriter, it will take them over 10 years to produce the right spelling. However, if they can use computer programming, they can finish the task within a day. A mild form of hallucination is known as a disturbance and can occur in most of the senses above. These may be things like seeing movement in peripheral vision or hearing faint noises and or voices. Auditory hallucinations are very common in schizophrenia. They may be benevolent, telling the subject good things about themselves, or malicious, cursing the subject, etc. Auditory hallucinations of the malicious type are frequently heard, for example, people talking about the subject behind his slash her back. Like auditory hallucinations, the source of the visual counterpart can also be behind the subject's back. Their visual counterpart is the feeling of being looked or stared at, usually with malicious intent. Frequently, auditory hallucinations and their visual counterpart are experienced by the subject together. Take the coffee industry. The figures are roughly these. The coffee market in the world is worth about 60 billion. The growers get 5.5 billion. Ten years ago, the market was about 30 billion and the growers got a third of that. What has happened? What has happened is that well-meaning people, Americans, Germans, Europeans, decided that they would help Vietnam. And so they created a coffee industry there, which is now the second biggest producer in the world. This has serious effects on other countries like Colombia that depend on coffee exports.
Heritage is what the present chooses to make of the past. That means that heritage is dynamic. It's a changing concept. And it also means that it tends to be defined in opposition to much that is going on in the present. It's endangered. Where there is heritage, there is often a sense of threat, you know, whether it's a building that's about to be bulldozed or a way of life that is dying out because of economic change. The heritage that we speak about in this country in terms of conservation tends to be a term that becomes very central or more central in new ways as the state becomes involved in this field of administering conservation. Three years ago, genome pioneer Craig Venter sailed the Sargasso Sea and returned with 1,800 species of microbes, including 150 never before seen. An impressive haul. But last week, scientists in New York announced that if you want to discover new and interesting bugs, you need travel no further than your own forearm. The researchers, at the NYU School of Medicine, identified 182 species of bacteria, including a dozen new ones in swabs taken from the arms of six healthy volunteers. Their study marks the first full-scale expedition to catalog the biota that calls the human epidermis its home. The microbes that live in and on our bodies outnumber our own cells 10 to 1. So they're an important part of our personal ecology. And it turns out the zoo of bacteria on one person's skin is very different from the zoo on someone else's. Almost three-quarters of the species identified were unique to an individual and only four species were found on all six subjects. For the record, the researchers took their samples from the subjects' forearms because that way no one had to undress. So who knows what exotic life forms may be waiting for discovery just behind your knees? I think with our linguistic training we also get all this invisible training to be authorities, to be the people who know. It is part of that process that you come out as a world authority on your chosen subject. But when we move into working with communities, we have to recognize that the communities have to be the authority in their language. Actually, a woman in the class I'm teaching at Sydney at the moment, a career woman, expressed this very nicely, although she was talking about something else, she was distinguishing expertise from authority. And certainly linguists, because of the training we do, have expertise in certain very narrow areas of language, but we don't have the authority over what to do with that knowledge or what to do with other knowledge that the community produces. I guess for me the bottom line is languages are lost because of the dominance of one person over another. That's not rocket science, it's not hard to work that out. But then what that means is if in working with language revival we continue to hold the authority, we actually haven't done anything towards undoing how languages are lost in the first place, so in a sense, the languages are still lost if the authority is still lost. I have said before that you can't have a civilization that doesn't have art when we think about the great civilizations historically all of them had a great production of culture and art because society did not fail to observe itself the sophistication of the great civilizations were their ability to look at themselves what exactly allows a society to do to be the producers of art and culture and to mirror back to the core of the society. What is being produced at that moment how do people think of themselves? And how are the individuals relating to the social structure at that time? Art is the vehicle in which guides us towards understanding what we were you to take away from art. What would be that mirror how do we see? What we are about. 
how would we understand what was going on in Paris at the time of the Impressionists? When people were learning to see in a completely different way before cinematography and a similar link that was invented people looked at the world in a very different way which was considered very radical at that time. Height is correlated with a lot of things. Up to a certain height, taller people make more money than the vertically challenged. And the taller presidential candidate almost always wins. Now a study finds that your height as an adult has a profound effect on your perception of your health. Short people judge their health to be worse than average or tall people judge theirs. The research was published in the journal Clinical Endocrinology. Data for the study came from the 2003 Health Survey for England. More than 14,000 participants filled out questionnaires and had their heights measured. The study only looked at how good the subject thought his or her health was, not their actual health. Questions focused on five areas, mobility, self-care, normal activities, pain or discomfort and anxiety or depression. Men shorter than about 5 feet 4 inches and women shorter than 5 foot reported the worst impressions. But small increases in height at the low end had much bigger effects on perception than the same increase among taller people. Other studies have shown, ironically, that shorter people on average actually live longer. In the solar system, many planets have rings, Saturn's rings are the most spectacular planetary rings. Consisting of different kinds of particles, these rings orbit the Sun. In 1610, Galileo was the first who spotted Saturn's rings. With his 20-power telescope, Galileo might have mistaken Saturn's gaseous ring to surmise that Saturn was formed of one planet with two moons as satellites. In 1675, Giovanni Cassini determined that Saturn's ring was actually composed of subrings with gaps between them. So the number of Saturn's rings are more than 10. Other planets like Venus, Jupiter, Neptune, Uranus also have rings but not as many as Saturn. Finally, scientists concluded that these rings are formed as a result of gravitational field. Household debt is the amount of money that households have borrowed and need to repay. Their most recent data indicate that households are in debt somewhere around $14 trillion. Most of that $14 trillion, $9 trillion or so is debt that's due for mortgages and the rest of the debt are things like cars, college debt which is growing and becoming a problem and credit card debt. I think it's not just the bottom end, it's certainly greater at the bottom end since they have less income and less ability to get out of debt but it also is becoming a problem for the middle class.
As Joanne pointed out only one country tiny little Bhutan wedged between China and India has adopted the gross national happiness as the central index of government policy and actually has had a good deal of success in education and in health and in economic growth and in environmental preservation and they have rather sophisticated way off measuring the effects of different policies on people's happiness but they're the only country to go that far but you're now beginning to get other countries interested enough to do kind of white paper policy analyzes about whether happiness research what effects would it have we used it more for public policy you're beginning to get to countries like Australia, France, Great Britain that are considering pushing regular statistics on happiness so it's beginning to become a subject of greater interest for policymakers and legislators and different advanced countries. Protons are finally transferred to the LHC both in a clockwise and an anti-clockwise direction, where they are accelerated for 20 minutes to 6.5 TeV. Beams circulate for many hours inside the LHC beam pipes under normal operating conditions. For each collision, the physicist's goal is to count, track, and characterize all the different particles. The charge of the particle, for instance, is obvious since particles with positive electric charge bend one way and those with negative charge bend the opposite way. Also, the momentum of the particle can be determined. Large Hadron Collider, LHC, is the world's largest particle accelerator lies in a tunnel. The LHC is a ring roughly 28 kilometers around that accelerates protons almost to the speed of light before colliding them head-on. Protons are particles found in the atomic nucleus, roughly 1,000 million millionth of a meter in size. The LHC starts with a bottle of hydrogen gas, which is sent through an electric field to strip away the electrons, leaving just the protons electric and magnetic fields are the key to a particle accelerator. This course provides students with an in-depth understanding of the exciting disciplines of politics and international relations. Students will learn about the workings of political institutions in countries around the world and explore the complex field of relations between nations. Topics in governance, public policy, public administration, national security, and border control ensure that students receive a broad and current education in the range of issues that are covered under the label of politics and international relations. Students will undertake four compulsory units and two majors, one in politics and international relations and the other in governance and policy. They will also choose an elective major from a wide choice of options including political communication, international studies, international business, and national security studies. In addition to acquiring specialist knowledge and competencies in politics and international relations and commerce, students will graduate with a range of generic skills such as critical thinking, enhanced communication abilities, problem-solving and strong capacities to work with others. They will also develop ethically-based and socially responsible attitudes and behaviors. What's an article? I was asking myself this very question in the post office yesterday, standing in line waiting to sign for, as it so happens, an article. A postal article. Not the postal article. Now before we get ahead of ourselves, an article in English is a word that precedes a noun and simply indicates specificity. This sounds quite complicated, and to be honest, it's quite complicated to say without spraying everyone within 15 feet, 
but the concept's quite simple. The definite article in English is the word the, and indicates a specific thing or type, for example, the train is an hour late. By contrast, the indefinite article in English is any of the words a, and or some, and the indefinite article indicates a nonspecific thing, for example, would you please pass me an apple? We always proceed a word with a if it doesn't start with a vowel sound. For example, take a hike, I'm spending a weekend at Bernie's, or there's a knight in shining armor. Similarly we proceed words with the indefinite article and if they do start with a vowel sound, for example, an ostrich, an enormous mess or an occupational health and safety policy. Why just burning a food item provide information about its value as a portion of food? The nutritional value of food can be measured on many different scales. The most basic measurement scale is the free energy content of the food. In other words, how much energy is released when chemical bonds within the food are broken. The energy content of food is measured in calories. The amount of kinetic energy required to raise the temperature of one milliliter of water. One degree food is burned under controlled conditions, breaking chemical bonds and releasing free energy. The burning is chemically similar to the breakdown of food in cellular respiration all over the process occurs much more quickly and in a less controlled fashion during a connection calorimeter can measure the energy in food but cannot measure the digested energy of what we have. In order to study the effects that climate change and pollution have on the environment long-term monitoring of the environment is necessary. One of the most important natural environments so never thought of the coral reefs, however, monitoring the fish population and biodiversity is still a challenging task. Data collection in this kind of environment is labor-intensive requiring divers to count the fish species in a certain area in recent years. Digital video recording has become much cheaper which makes underwater cameras a good alternative for data collection. Furthermore, automatic video processing and pattern recognition are able to process this kind of data. This paper describes an entire system which is being developed to allow marine biologists to analyze large amounts of video data for long-term monitoring purposes. To give an indication of the challenges in this project summary is given of the amount of data that the system is expected to process at the moment, around 10 cameras record 12 o'clock hours daylight with some have already recorded over 4 years the estimated amount of raw video deck 2 is at the moment 112 terabytes. By processing the state to using automatic video processing software we expect to find around 1,010 fish which will also be categorized by species or family. All this data will be stored in a database which is expected to take up to 500 gigabytes. Besides processing all this data it will also be a challenge to present the state to marine biologists in a usable manner. A non-governmental organization, NGO, is an organization that is neither a part of a government nor a conventional for-profit business. Usually set up by ordinary citizens, NGOs may be funded by governments, foundations, businesses, or private persons. Some avoid formal funding altogether and are run primarily by volunteers. NGOs are highly diverse groups of organizations engaged in a wide range of acti activities and take different forms in different parts of the world. Some may have charitable status, while others may be registered for tax exemption based on recognition of social purposes. 
others may be fronts for political, religious, or other interests. The number of NGOs in the United States is estimated at 1.5 million. Russia has 277,000 NGOs. India is estimated to have had around 2 million NGOs in 2009, just over one NGO per 600 Indians, and many times the number of primary schools and primary health centers in India. NGOs are difficult to define, and the term NGO is rarely used consistently. As a result, there are many different classifications in use. The most common focus is on orientation and level of operation. Relationship between the fault lines in the Earth's crust and an earthquake. This dislocation of the rock occurs from the Earth's surface, some kilometers to several hundred kilometers vertically down to the crust. The earthquake's focus is called the epicenter which is vertically beneath the interior of the Earth's crust and the energy releases and transfers through epicenter. The faults are the fracture on the Earth's crust. The position of the epicenters can be identified by the faults map, looking down from the center of the Earth. It will result in a seismic wave which is decreased as it moved away from the epicenter. The impact on young Australians who are interested in buying a home of their own has been very significant. Australia's housing affordability now shapes the typical housing cycle or housing career as some people call it. Most Australians in the normal course of events are people who move through the housing cycle in a way that matches the stages of life that they're at. So, they move out of the family home in their late teens or early 20s as they gain their independence from their families, then they rent to save for a home they can afford as either a group or maybe a couple and maybe they can upgrade it when they have a family in their middle age, they are more than likely to have paid off their mortgage. And that means they have housing security in their old age. That's no longer the typical housing cycle for Australians, young people generally live at home for much longer than they once did. They generally rent for longer and they're more likely to be saddled with a mortgage not just into their middle age but more often than not into their retirement as well. In fact, in 2006, 65,000 retiree households were still paying off the mortgage. Affordable rent is also an elusive right around Australia. We have very low rental vacancies, we see high turnover as landlords want to maximize their profits in a tight market, and we see less long-term or lifelong rental, as we see in other countries and other economies. At the top, you would have a king. Now the king would rule over a kingdom. Now, this is not so easy to govern especially during the Middle Ages. And the king might owe many people, things especially people who helped the king come to power, helped him dispose of the previous king or to conquer this land. And so in exchange for that and to help govern, he might grant land or feasts to other people. And the key currency in the Middle Ages under the feudal system island. And land in exchange for loyalty and service. So this whole thing is a kingdom. Now right over here, this is a duchy. And a duchy will be controlled by a duke. I guess I didn't call it ducky because that just doesn't sound as serious. So the king might grant a duchy, a duchy to a duke and in exchange, the duke would provide loyalty pledge their fealty. If the kingdom is threatened, the duke will fight alongside. The king would provide their own troops if the king wants to go conquer other territories, 
Same thing, and also provide the king with taxes which might be in the form of coinage depending on what time and region we are in the Middle Ages or it might be in the form of a percentage of the agricultural production from this duchy. Remember two things, first I want you to try and remember learning how to ride a bike. Maybe you have a scar you received when you flipped over the handlebars. The next thing I want you to remember is how to ride a bike. The reason I asked you to recall both of these memories is that they belong to two different designated realms of memory. Memory is a fluid and dynamic system that is exceedingly complicated. To this end, psychologists have attempted to divide memory up to make it easier to study. There are two main categories. Explicit memory is a memory that can be intentionally and consciously recalled. This is your memory of riding a bike and falling over the handlebars and skinning your knee. It is wrong, however, to exaggerate the similarity between language and other cognitive skills, because language stands apart in several ways. For one thing, the use of language is universal all normally developing children learn to speak at least one language, and many learn more than one. By contrast, not everyone becomes proficient at complex mathematical reasoning, few people learn to paint well, and many people cannot carry a tune. Because everyone is capable of learning to speak and understand language, it may seem to be simple. But just the opposite is true language is one of the most complexes of all human cognitive abilities. Our civilization, which subsumes most of its predecessors, is a great ship steaming at speed into the future. It travels faster, further, and more laden than any before. We may not be able to foresee every reef and hazard, but by reading her compass bearing and headway, by understanding her design, her safety record, and the abilities of her crew, we can, I think, plot a wise course between the narrows and bergs looming ahead. And I believe we must do this without delay. Because there are too many shipwrecks behind us. The vessel we are now aboard is not merely the biggest of all time, it's also the only one left. The future of everything we have accomplished since our intelligence evolved will depend on the wisdom of our actions over the next few years. Like all creatures, humans have made their way in the world so far by trial and error, unlike other creatures. We have a presence so colossal that error is a luxury we can no longer afford. The world has grown too small to forgive us any big mistakes. This busy little town is named after Sir David's first cousin. It's also a Welsh language stronghold. According to the 2001 census results, 70% of the town's population could speak Welsh but even here the language may not be completely safe. The Welsh Language Board expects last year's census results to show a fall in the number of Welsh speakers living in its northern and western heartlands. One of the main reasons for that the board says is migration. Many Welsh speakers are choosing to leave the country. At the same time, 
only a small percentage of those moving in can speak the language or choose to learn it. Historically, over the past 70 to 80 years, Wales people have continually left in order to find a better standard of pay maybe in quality of employment. The things have changed was probably is that there is a larger amount of English people now who have found Wales of the last 20 to 25 years particularly this corner of Wales and regarded as a desirable place to come and live and as opposed to many areas in England and cheaper as well. We all know what a galaxy looks like, right? It's a huge collection of stars and other matter that's shaped like a spiral or no lips and if you're an astronomy fan you probably know that most the mass is from invisible mysterious material called dark matter. Well, NASA's Hubble Space Telescope just took an image of a galaxy that is none of those things. For the first time astronomers have strong evidence for a galaxy not having a significant amount of dark matter. Most astronomers currently believe that dark matter plays a fundamental role in our universe and the formation of galaxies. This is because galaxies seem to have a lot more mass than what we can account for based on just the stars we see. How much mass is in the system is determined by measuring the speed at which galaxies rotate or individual stars in a galaxy move.